Hi everyone, my name is Frank Westfall, and in this video, I am gonna take this older Dell Latitude E6430 laptop, which has been upgraded a number of times in its lifetime already, and is currently running Windows 10. And I am going to install a clean factory image of Windows 11 onto it for free using the clean install method, which is better than using the Windows update option, which will soon be available in Windows 10. Stay tuned for the step-by-step -step tutorial where I will go through these seven steps. One, preparing what you will need. Two, backing up your user data, files, and software license keys. Three, creating a bootable USB drive with Windows 11 on it. Four, configuring the system BIOS by enabling UEFI boot mode, ensuring your USB ports are enabled, updating your system BIOS firmware, and updating your TPM firmware if applicable. 5. Installing a new solid state drive. This is optional, but I do recommend that if you're taking the time to do a clean install of an operating system and you're running a mechanical hard drive, I recommend putting a solid state drive in. The system will run so much faster and so much smoother, it's definitely worth it. 6. Installing and activating Windows 11. 7. Restoring your user data to the new Windows 11 system. You can do this on most computers that are 2012 or newer and basically on any computer that is 2015 or newer. This includes desktops, laptops, and other brands of computers as well. The main new requirement for Windows 11 is that the system BIOS supports UEFI boot mode. Windows 11 cannot be installed if the boot mode is set to legacy or if the computer does not have the options to enable UEFI boot mode. I'm gonna show you the clean install method of installing the new operating system. As a professional IT engineer, I have done this clean install method hundreds of times, and this is the way I do it on all operating systems for single computers, including my own. A uh, clean install results in a faster, perfectly clean, and more stable system than if you do the Windows 11 upgrade from within the running operating system as an update. I do not ever recommend doing operating system upgrades from within the existing running operating system. Upgrades from within the existing running operating system always end up with bugs and junk data. This means that they are less efficient and less stable from day one. A clean install is when you overwrite the existing operating system drive with a factory image of the new operating system. Because of this, there are less or no bugs, no junk data, no malware, and the operating system runs perfectly clean and smooth like a brand new computer. In fact, a clean install of a factory operating system is better than a brand new computer from a software standpoint because computer manufacturers typically modify the factory operating system image and then install that modified image on their computers. This means that the moment you turn on a brand new computer, you're already running a modified version of the original factory operating system. So not only do you get a more efficient version of the operating system when you do a clean install, but you can also save a lot of money because you can run brand new software on your existing hardware in most cases. I'm gonna show you how to do this on Dell hardware, but as I mentioned, you can do this on any hardware as long as it meets the minimum system requirements for Windows 11. The only part that is different for other brands of computers are that the BIOS options will be in different places in the BIOS, but you will still want to configure the same options. And for a different brand of computer, you'll have to go to that manufacturer's website to get the latest BIOS and TPM firmware updates. The following are the minimum system requirements required to run Windows 11. Processor, one gigahertz or faster with two or more cores on a compatible 64-bit processor. So basically any Intel Core 2 Duo or above processor or any AMD Athlon 64 X2 or above processor will meet these requirements. Four gigabytes of RAM is the minimum, but I do recommend upgrading if you can to at least eight gigabytes for a modern system that's gonna run clean, smooth, and fast. Storage, 64 gigabytes or larger storage device. System firmware. With Windows 11, the system firmware, otherwise known as the system BIOS, must support UEFI boot mode. If it does not support UEFI boot mode, you cannot run Windows 11 on it at all. TPM stands for Trusted Platform Module, and it's a chip that's integrated into the motherboard on many systems for enhanced security. TPM is stated as a requirement 
but you can actually run Windows 11 without a TPM chip and on a TPM chip that's running the older TPM version 1.2 on it. So basically if your computer is 2015 or newer, you can run Windows 11 on it for sure. And in some cases you can use older hardware as well as I did in this video. This particular laptop is a 2012 era computer. If you have user data files that you want to keep you will need to copy that to an external medium such as a USB thumb flash drive if it is large enough or an external USB drive such as a Seagate or Western Digital USB 2.0 or 3.0 external storage drive. I will show you how to do this in step two and those external storage drives can be purchased anywhere online or in stores for between 60 and 90 dollars. If you do not back up your user data or files and folders to an external drive, they will be overwritten when the new operating system is installed. So if you have user data, files and folders that you want to keep, do not skip step two. And lastly, if you are going to go through the trouble of installing a perfectly clean operating system, I highly recommend upgrading to a solid state drive, also known as an SSD. I cover this in step five. Any SSD is much faster than a traditional hard drive and your system will be much faster if you upgrade to an SSD. Two brands that I have used extensively and recommend are Crucial MX series and Samsung Evo and Pro series. These are high quality, super fast SSDs and they're absolutely worth the cost. And as I mentioned, you can run Windows 11 on four gigabytes of RAM, okay, but I highly recommend upgrading to eight gigabytes of RAM while you're at it as well. If you want a fast system, easily capable of everyday multitasking, office work, and then some. All right, let's get to it. Step one, preparing what you need. So as I mentioned, if you're going to back up data, it is ideal to get one of these external storage drives, such as this, this one's a Seagate, two terabyte USB 3.0 drive. We'll use this for backing up the data before we overwrite the system drive. And also you can use these for automatic local backup on the system once it's up and running. I'm gonna do another video that shows how to set that up in the future. This is the USB cable for that drive. Uh, in this case, this is the new solid state drive. You can use any solid state drive, a small screwdriver to remove the drive from this one and put the new one in, and then a USB flash drive that will be used to create the Windows 11 installation media. And then we'll use that installation media to install Windows 11 on to this new solid state drive after we put it in the computer. Okay, so we're going to back up our user data so we will need to plug in the external USB drive, the large one. So we go to File Explorer, this PC, local disk, users, and in this case, my user is example user. I created this user and put some test data in the common locations. This is what's called a Windows user profile. We're going to back up all of the user data in this user's Windows user profile. So we click it, and this is all the user data that is in the most common locations people store it within their user profile. We're going to select all of that, and then open up another File Explorer window. This time we're going to navigate to this PC to the backup plus drive. We are going to copy all of the data here and paste it onto the external backup drive. And if you have a lot of user data in your user profile, it is very common for this to take quite a while. Sometimes there are hundreds of gigs or terabytes of data that you'd want to be backing up to the external drive. And in that case, it could take a very long time. In this case, there's a very small amount of data in the user profile, so it's not going to take that long. Okay, and now just to demonstrate, this is the C drive on the left. And I created some example data. Now we go over to the desktop on the Seagate external backup drive and we see the exact same data. 
I also put some of that data in documents. Go to documents, same thing. We want an exact copy of all the data in the user profile. Downloads, same thing. I put some test music in the music folder, some songs, songs, a couple pictures. couple of videos. That's an exact copy of the Windows user profile data. It's possible that you can have data in other locations. So if you do, just be aware that you need to copy it off to the external hard drive. Now we want to get a copy of the software license keys on the computer. And we can do that using the Belark advisor tool. So we can close these out open a web browser go to the Blark website and we are going to use the Blark advisor tool here we just enter our email address Now we can download the advisor tool and start installing that. We do not need to check for security definitions. We are interested only in the software licensing on this computer. We can also skip the network analysis. Now it has generated a report and there's a, a section that shows the software licenses. This is what we want. The main thing we're interested in here is the Windows license key so that we can use this the same key here to activate Windows 11. If you have other software installed, such as Adobe Acrobat or Microsoft Office or other third-party software, it will very often find the license keys for those pieces of software as well. So this is a handy tool for pulling your license information off your computer. We're going to copy this key. Go to the external backup drive. Create a new text document. Name it whatever you want. I've I named it Windows License Key. Paste the key in there. Save it. Now we've backed up all the user data and the software license keys. The next step is to create the bootable media that has Windows 11 on it on a USB flash drive. So because Windows 11 hasn't been officially released yet, we are going to get a copy of the Windows 11 ISO file from what is called the Windows Flighting Program. In order to do this, we'll have to sign in to our Microsoft account and download the ISO. But once Windows 10 has been released to the general public, you won't have to sign in, most likely, to get a copy of the ISO. You'll be able to download it in the same way that you can do Windows 10 right now, and then also use their media creation tool to create the bootable media instead of the application Rufus that we're going to use in this example. So to get the pre-release version of Windows 11, we have to use the Windows Insider program. And once it's released to the general public, you won't have to do this. You can just download it without a Microsoft account and without signing in. So we want to open a browser. Now we want to go to insider.windows.com and we want to sign in if you don't have a Microsoft account you can create a free one
Now we're going to scroll down to Flight Now, where we can download a Windows Insider Preview ISO. At the bottom, we select the edition. And we want to select the option Windows 11 Insider Preview Beta Channel. Confirm. Select the language. Confirm. And this is the ISO file download that we want. It's a large file, so it's going to take a while to download. While that's downloading, we can go and get a copy of the Rufus application tool, which we will use to take that ISO file and write the data inside the ISO file onto a USB drive, which is then bootable. So we can use that USB drive to install Windows 11 on the new solid state drive that we're going to also install on this computer. The website for this is rufus.ie. I like the portable version. So now we're just going to let this ISO download for a while. Okay, now that we've downloaded our Windows 11 ISO file, we're going to use that file to create a bootable USB flash drive. We can close this, go to downloads where we downloaded the Rufus application, run that. We don't need to check for updates. At this point, we want to insert the USB flash drive that we're going to create the bootable media onto. That was the green thumb drive I showed in the preparation step. I already named this one Windows 11 bootable USB. This is what we're going to write to and then we're going to select the ISO that we want to use which is the one we just downloaded. So downloads. If we pull this out we can see this is an ISO file. Select that one. And for Windows 11, you have to use the GPT partition scheme and UEFI. I'm going to label this Windows 11 bootable. We hit start. All of the data on the USB thumb drive will be destroyed. That's okay. And now Rufus is creating the bootable USB flash drive with Windows 11 on it from the Windows 11 ISO file. While this bootable media is being created, please take the time to hit the like button, which is the thumbs up button, leave comments or questions, and subscribe for more how-to videos on Windows 11 coming soon. Thank you for watching so far. Okay, that's finishing up. So far, we have gone through steps one through three. We have prepared what we needed, we have backed up our user data and software license keys, particularly the Windows 10 license key. We have created a bootable USB with Windows 11 on it. Now that this is complete, we're going to eject this. We can close this. We can eject the USB disk. That's the volume label that I put on it. And remove it from the computer. Now we want to update the BIOS firmware and TPM firmware. To do this, we're going to go to the Dell website because this is a Dell computer. Always go to the website of the manufacturer of your computer to get drivers and downloads for it. Here we're going directly to www.dell.com and support for Latitude E6430. They make it really easy to search. Now we're gonna get specific uh, drivers and downloads and we wanna manually do this. We're gonna look for BIOS and our operating system is Windows 10 64-bit. Let's check out the details of this. This is system BIOS. 
This is version A24. We're going to download this. You want to be on the latest version of your system BIOS because on older hardware, the previous versions of the system BIOS may not allow UEFI boot mode. It's possible that if your computer has legacy boot mode in the system BIOS now, if you update the system BIOS, you can get the option to have UEFI boot mode, which means you can then run Windows 11. We're going to run this. So on this particular computer, I already have the newest BIOS running on it, but I'm going to go through the process of reflashing the BIOS anyway to show you how it's done. We're going from A24 to A24. If you have an older BIOS, it'll say you're going from an older version to a newer version. We can close this window if we want. The computer restarts automatically when the BIOS is flashed. Now the computer restarts and we have the new BIOS running on it. I'm just going to log in. Here we're going directly to the Dell website and getting the TPM firmware update utility. It may be applicable on this computer or may not. We're going to find out. I'm going to run this. So it looks like in this case, we're not able to run TPM 2.0. So we're probably running TPM 1.2. I dug into this a little bit and it looks like we won't be able to run TPM 2.0 on this computer. But that's okay, we can still run Windows 11. TPM is recommended and it's stated as a system requirement, but it's not actually a system requirement. So even if you have TPM 1.2 or no TPM chip at all, you can still run Windows 11. So now we're gonna power the computer off, install a new solid state drive, configure the BIOS settings, and then move on to finally installing Windows 11. All right, once the computer's off, you want to unplug everything. In this case, we're going to flip it over. On this series of Dell Latitudes, the hard drive is located right here. We're going to remove that, put the solid state drive in but the system drive can be located in a number of different places depending on the manufacturer of your computer. You can find specific tutorials on YouTube or online to see exactly where your system drive is located and then upgrade it to an SSD if you're doing that process. I actually have an SSD in this one already, but for the purpose of demonstrating how it's done, I'm going to install this different Crucial MX300 SSD. I like to keep all the parts in order so that I can pop it right back in place without having to think about it. It's the old drive and the new drive.
Once that's secure, we just slide it right back into the computer. Secure these screws back. And a quick note, if you are upgrading to an SSD inside a desktop, make sure to ground yourself to the frame of the computer using any wire or one of those static electric discharge wrist straps so you don't fry your motherboard if you happen to touch it. Now we're gonna power it on and configure the system BIOS. So power the system on and immediately hit the F12 key. Repeatedly. Preparing a one-time boot menu. And then we are going to go down to BIOS setup. And in here, the options that we want to configure are the boot sequence. Right now we're set to legacy boot. We can still run Windows 10 on legacy boot, but Windows 11 will not run on legacy boot. We have to switch it to UEFI. Can apply that. Now we want to go to system configuration, USB configuration and make sure that enable USB boot support is checked. And if you have a TPM chip and you want to use it, you can go to security, TPM security, and then check it and activate. A TPM chip is actually very beneficial when you're using Windows BitLocker. Now we can exit, plug in our Windows 11 bootable media that we created earlier. Now we can power the system on again and hit F12 repeatedly for the one-time boot menu. Now we're going to choose UEFI boot and this is the USB flash drive with Windows 11 on it that we created. Hit enter. Here we have the Windows 11 setup. Install now. This is where we want to enter the key that we pulled off of the previous Windows 10 operating system. Accept the terms. Do custom install. In here, we want to delete all the partitions that are there, so we're left with a single partition. The Windows 11 installation is going to create the partitions it needs on the drive automatically. The operating system is being read from the USB drive and written to the new solid state drive we installed. All right, now the installation is complete. The computer is going to restart. Now we're running Windows 11. Go through the setup. We're gonna enter a computer name. After entering the name, it restarted to apply the computer name. Continuing the setup now, and we're going to set this up for personal use. I prefer to not use a Microsoft account when signing into my computer, so I do an offline account. It's trying to make me use a Microsoft account. I don't want one. We'll use the same user that we used before. Example user, add a password. I always recommend password protecting your computers. It's the most basic level of protection you have if the computer is ever lost or stolen. For more advanced protection, you can use BitLocker drive encryption or other types of drive encryption. But at the very least, put a password on your computer and use a complex one. I'm just gonna put a generic answer for all the security questions. I would do real security questions on your own computer. So if you ever get locked out, you can get back in. I just put mic for all of them. And I like to turn these things off. I don't wanna be having network communication to do all this stuff. And if I'm not using these things or don't want them, I don't want system resources being allocated to things I'm not using. 
and I certainly don't want to be advertised to on my own personal computer. It's downloading some updates. And while this is happening, thank you again for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. I will be posting a lot more in-depth Windows 11 videos over time. All right, the update's finished. It restarted, and we're about to log in for the first time. Here we are at the Windows 11 desktop. So the first thing we're going to do is restore our user data that we backed up. We're going to plug in the large external USB drive. Go to File Explorer. I like to open one File Explorer window to represent the local system drive and another File Explorer to represent the external drive. On the right side, we're doing the external backup drive, and on the left side, we're doing the local system drive. C, users, example user, and now we're looking at the exact same locations. These are the Windows 11 locations on the left, and these are the previous Windows 10 locations on the right. We're going to simply go into the folders, copy the data, and manually paste it into the exact same folder on the new system. We didn't have any data in 3D objects or contacts, but we did have data in desktop. Copy that. And just some quick pointers. Control A will select everything in the folder. Control C will copy it. Go to the same folder over here, desktop. And Control V will paste it in there. We're gonna do the same for all these folders. Documents. Control A, Control C, documents on the new drive, Control V. Downloads, we had some music on the old one. We had some pictures. I don't like these folders there myself. And I think we had a couple of videos. And our Windows license key is what's being used on Windows 11 now. And we want to hang on to this key because this is actually a Windows 7 Pro key. This Windows 7 Pro key has activated Windows 7 Pro, Windows 10 Pro, and now Windows 11 Pro. Hang on to your operating system license keys. We're just going to take a copy of this. Control C and paste it over here. Now we're done with the external backup drive. We can eject that. Now you can see our user data that was on the desktop of Windows 10 is now on the desktop of Windows 11. If we go to documents, the documents we had on our Windows 10 system are on our Windows 11 system. The pictures we had on our Windows 10 system are on our Windows 11 system, and so forth. Let's take a look to see if Windows 11 is officially activated with the license key we used. And here we have Windows 11 Pro, activation state, active. Activated with a digital license. And that's it. We now have Windows 11 running on this 2012 era Dell Latitude E6430. Thank you for watching. I hope this was helpful. Please like, comment, and subscribe for more how-to videos on Windows 11 coming soon.
Also, please check out my channel for lots of other cool videos ranging from music to philosophy and personal health to outdoor activities. I post a lot of interesting content. Thank you.